From one islander to another, Isle of Wight Radio proudly presents John Hannam Meets. Delighted to be back in London at Wise Buddha Studio to meet uh, Natasha Barnes. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. Hello. And you're celebrating a brand new album called Real, which I've been playing in the car for a few days and uh, it keeps growing and growing on me, which is brilliant. Oh, that's lovely. (laughs) You sing such a wide variety of songs on there, which I think is noticeable straight away. Yeah, they've all got me in common, I suppose. (laughs) Yes. Um, (laughs) But... um... They are certainly um, an eclectic mix of sort of everything that I hold dear in music. When I played it, and I always like to look at songwriters, and it also proves what a brilliant songwriter Paul O'Duffy is because he's written some fantastic songs. He is wonderful. He's a master collaborator and he gets the the best out of people. And I definitely learned that working with him as my producer. He he got the best out of me straight away. He knew knew how to do it straight away somehow. He's sort of, uh, what he's produced, he's done everything on there, hasn't he, really, which is wonderful. Yeah. So... I come from the Isle of Wight, and you come from Ringwood, which is not that far away. It's not. I can see you from the coast. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love coming to Ringwood. I came once to review a show for the stage, and it's like an old... It was a theatre, but it was like an old church or something. It was absolutely lovely. But Ringwood's a nice place, isn't it, really? It's lovely. It's a lovely little part of the world, and I'm... um, Currently, sort of spending a lot of time there, I will always go back. <laughs> it's still in Hampshire because, unfortunately, they moved Bournemouth from Bournemouth, well into Dorset, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, so we're right on the cusp, but we're still we still remain Hampshire. I was born in Dorset, but I'm a Hampshire girl. So good, pleased to yeah. hear it. <laughs> I know you went to Bournemouth for Little Big Theatre School, didn't you? From a very early age, really. Yeah, I went to Big Little from about uh, six years old. Wow! And I was there until I was um, seventeen, and then I went straight off into the West End. So it was a huge part of my life. I mean, some people don't decide what they want to do until they're older, but when you sort of started there, when you were like five and six, mm. did you know then that's what you hoped to do? I think I loved telling stories and pretending to be somebody else when I was five or six. Whether or not I computed that I had to earn money one day and that that might be a way to do it, I'm not sure. I think it took a couple of years to get around to that bit. But I think it was more that, you know, my parents sort of just went, we've got to do something with this energy of this child that loves telling stories and and is always watching Disney films and, and old musicals. So I really grew there. I grew I grew into a person and I... I consider myself incredibly lucky to never have had another option i i only ever wanted to do something to do with performance so i'm, I'm lucky to have never sort of diverted when you were in bournemouth you did quite a, a few sort of in-house shows didn't you really yes i did yeah i did a lot of a lot did of you do anne frank were you with it yeah with yeah. The, the bournemouth little theater club i did i played anne in anne frank when i was 13 and actually the man that was meant to be playing otto frank was offered a, a job traveling into the states so he pulled out at the last minute and my dad was drafted in was to he? play my dad to play Otto Frank. So yeah, we we did that together and we were in the paper together and um Was he an actor or did he just do it? He did um he did a lot of national youth theatre and he did a lot at uni and he's um he's an incredibly funny, intelligent man, my dad. And um so you know he he went really method. He grew a beard for it and everything. Did he? And yeah, and um, he was just wonderful. And he used to get really annoyed at me because I never knew my lines. And then come opening night, I was word perfect. And he'd been studying for months, and it was just. But it was one of those. Yeah, I I, I always forget that happens sometimes. But that was my first play, my first straight play. Really. Yeah. And then at Ringwood School, I know you did quite a few things there, didn't you, really? Every, yeah, pretty much every year I got my hands in into Ringwood School and I love it and I still go back and they've just done Beauty and the Beast. Have they? Um, yeah, I mean, they do incredible shows. It's it's so lovely to come from such a wonderful part of the world where performing art is, is champion and there's so much for youngsters to do. And I'm, I've come back recently to do a bit of teaching for Big Little Theatre School because oh. they're such a great a great part of my sort of heritage and, and who I am and, you know, I, they're part of my legacy and I'm part of theirs, hopefully. so. School productions, I remember going to see a production when my daughter went to school on the Isle of Wight and they did Godspell. Oh, wow. And it was one of the finest shows I've ever seen. Yeah. Amazing, you know. Yeah, I think it's because, you know, you when you're in, in your school, putting a school production together, you're tapping into talent that is raw, nothing... Nothing is tampered with it. It is what a, it is a child's instinct, and there is nothing quite like it. Now, me being old, you see, I'm lucky in the respect that I can remember Marilyn Monroe, Judy Garland, 
Uh, Doris Day, all people that influenced you. But I feel privileged to have been around when they were sort of at the peak of their fame, really. Those old stars, they're still looked on with great awe, aren't they, by young people? Absolutely. I mean, well, I kind of want to interview you now because I want to know everything you know. (laughs) (laughs) I have such a... I have such a fascination with, um, especially with, with, with Judy Garland and, and Vivian Lee. I love Vivian Lee, Elizabeth Taylor. And I think that they were incredible. They, um, they kept going in a way that, that a lot of young people today don't realise how to keep going through adversity the way that they did. All I'm going to say is that during my life, uh, I've interviewed 4,000 people from showbiz, so I have been rather lucky. Wow. <laughs> in, a, <laughs> in a way, your sort of career was in parallel with Laura Michelle Kelly, who came from the Isle of Wight, obviously. Yes. She started on the Isle of Wight. Now, she didn't go to a drama school. She queued up around the block. Uh, for an audition for Beauty and the Beast. And in a way, that's how you got in, wasn't it? By just going up for an audition. I went for an open audition at 18 to get a bit of audition experience and then I got the job accidentally. Um, And and Laura, I'm a massive fan of Laura and I love that she is now um, across the pond doing, doing the big stuff in Broadway. I think she's... She's incredible. Um, She's a wonderful, wonderful performer. I remember going to see her in local shows and she was just in the chorus at that particular time, you know, and then... But she's unspoiled. She's just the same now as she was when she was younger. She's, you know, which is good, isn't it? Yeah, and she, you don't... I think when you don't go to drama school, you kind of, at the time, you're wary of that fact and you feel like it makes you less of a performer, but actually what it does is it makes you more of a performer because there's no there's no ethos there's no label that isn't you i've i've created my own work ethic and i've taught myself and learned from people around me and i th- i'm proud of my work because of that you planned a gap year and you were going to work in Waitrose, is that right? That is right, yes. Is it? I work in Waitrose. Would you have been good in Waitrose? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very good in Waitrose now. I get I buy everything. Um, but, um, yes, I was going to... I'd, I'd gotten into Mount View Theatre School, but I wanted to do straight theatre, so I was going to reapply, um, take a gap year, earn some money, go and see a lot of shows, listen to a lot of music, and um, try again and, and try and get somewhere uh, to do straight acting. And in order to get a little bit more audition experience, I went to an open audition for a show that had come over to the West End from Broadway and was looking for a brand new original London cast. And I accidentally got the job and moved. I think I, I, I got the job and then I moved in, in November and started the, then. So it was it was about, I had about six weeks before I moved to London. Was that Spring Awakening? Yes, yeah, that was Spring Awakening. So fond memories for you then? Hugely. It was it was the first of um, a few fairy tale moments in my life and career, I think. You did chess as well? I did chess, which I, I was thinking about just the other day because obviously chess is making a reappearance this year. And it was the most wonderful show and we made sense of it in a way that it hadn't been made sense of before. And, and I pl- I got to play Svetlana, but I'm, I'm eagerly awaiting the day that I can play Florence because I love all her songs as well. Just wanted to do both. Wonderful songs. In yeah, them. beautiful. I mean, yeah, stunning. Years ago, if someone had said they were going to write a musical about chess, you know, you think how boring. But the show wasn't boring, was it? Not at all. It was. It was. It was. I mean, the backdrop of the Cold War did sort of help, I suppose, in a way. But it's a flawed musical, and I love flawed musicals. I was. I was lucky enough to play Mabel in Mac and Mabel with the London Musical Theatre Orchestra at the end of last year. And again, that is another flawed show where the music is incredible and it faultless. Is. And it's um, the chess is very similar. You know, there's a lot of musical theatre out there that's. Faultless. Mac and Mabel, it's never been the big hit in England or Great Britain that it should be because there's amazing songs, aren't they? They are incredible. I think I think it's um it's it's never been classed as a hit anywhere because it's um the story is is it's finding a way to tell that story. The book is flawed in a way, um, but the music is is incredible, and um, I love singing the songs. And if they if they ever do it properly, I would love to play Mabel, really get under the skin of the character because she's she's ever such fun. She reminds me of Fanny Bryce in Funny Girl. Yeah. Lend me a tenor. Yeah, another one. Well, my first farce, that was. Was it? Yeah, and I had a wonderful time working with Matthew Kelly in town and it was, um, it was my second West End show, so it was kind of the show that made me realise it wasn't a fluke that I'd gotten the first one um, and that I was sort of here to stay and I could make a career out of this and give it a go. And um, I understudied the fabulous Cassidy Jansen, who is now a huge star in her own right. 
and uh, she was wonderful and we stayed in touch and it's been wonderful. We sort of follow each other's careers. And, and Matthew Kelly, I love him. I've interviewed him, I don't know, four or five times. And he's he, great, isn't he's he? He's fantastic. He, he always comes up with something different and yeah. he's, he's a genuine nice guy, isn't he? He is. He's wonderful to work with as well. Endlessly patient and very funny. Funny Girl, in a way, changed your life, didn't it? Because firstly at the Chocolate Factory mm -hmm. and then obviously at the Savoy Theatre. Uh, but what I like about you, I know you were understudy initially to Sheridan, but you didn't come through via TV reality show, did you? You came through on your own sort of theatre ability, really, don't um, you think? Yeah, I think I, I've, I, it's, there's been a lot of perseverance and a few right place at right time. But it's um, my, my dad always used to say it's what what you do with the opportunity once you get it. It's um, it is what is what is the the sort of telltale factor of success. And um, I think with with Funny Girl, it was an it was another job and it was a chance to understudy somebody that I could learn from. And I took it on as a learning experience. I was very excited. I thought I might get on once or twice. Um, and I never thought that uh, the the media fury that would that would ensue and 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 the, the the launch pad that it proved to be, I never thought that that would happen. And I was incredibly lucky to have that happen and to be ready for it physically and mentally. I think just to, I just about withstood it and then um, was very very tired afterwards. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm always a great fan of Sheridan and I can remember she came to the Isle of Wight and I went to her hotel in the morning, had breakfast and did an interview and very unspoiled, just a natural lady really, which is terrific, isn't it? Yeah, it's what I relate to the most, I think, about a lot of people. The wonderful lady that wrote my single supermodel, Rebecca Ferguson, is a completely untarnished, natural, real woman um, and also a mum and I, I love her very much. I think she's amazing. That's an amazing song, that. Oh, thank you. I <laughs> love it because it, it, every time you hear it, it gets better and better and better. Well, it? it's a vulnerable song. It's a, The message is vulnerability and, I, and it's about being flawed and feeling flawed and having insecurities and I don't think there's enough of that out there and it's nice to, to, to put a voice to that track, yeah. So, Natasha, standing ovations... I always love it when I see a deputy come on, an understudy, and they do so well and everyone just stands. It's, I've done it a few times. It, it must be fantastic for the person that's standing yeah. on stage, really. Well, you never you never take it for granted, especially when you're an understudy. You, um, and I used to go through a roller coaster every night, every show with Funny Girl, where the, the show would begin with um, at tonight's performance, the role of Fanny Bryce would be played by Natasha Barnes and then you'd hear, oh... And you'd hear discord and disappointment. And then you'd hear the beautiful overture and you'd steal yourself and you'd walk out on that stage and you'd go, right, give me 20 minutes and hopefully I'll have won you over by people. By the time we get to the song People, I yes. hopefully will have got you by then. And to go from that disappointment to an audience on their feet, which happened every single time. I never didn't get one on the tour or town, which was a Nordic Sheridan, which is incredible. It must be something to do with the part, I guess, or the music, the uplifting ending, I'm not sure. But to raise people to their feet in a celebration when they've started out so disappointed is something that I will never, ever forget. And um, I was so glad that I could be a part of a show that could do that. Did you play it with... Imelda Staunton in mind how she would have played it is that a sort of a... I think maybe subconsciously because a lot of critics then sort of I think it was Mark Shenton said that I I was a bit a bit Judy Garland and a bit Imelda Staunton which is possibly just the most wonderful sentence I think anyone has ever ever said like aimed at me anyway because I love those two human beings and their work I'd been to see Imelda Staunton a few months before I got the job understudying uh, Sheridan so I went to see her in Gypsy and I remember being caught totally off guard and you know when you you know when you sort of loud cry you're sobbing you've got a sob trapped in your chair it was that sort of illicit response and usually as an actress I'll go to the theatre quite hard nosed and be quite critical just because I, I know how it all works but mm. she just takes you away and um, she's real and she's not vain there's no vanity in her performance there's just realness and intellect and I love it and if I can be anything like that I would be incredibly happy You've been in a West End thriller too haven't you? Oh, uh, yeah, an off-West End thriller, yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, a play. Did you enjoy that? I loved it. I just found out I was pregnant, so I was suffering with morning sickness at the time. Oh. Um, and um, it was it's an hour, it was an hour and a half straight through, and once you were on, you were never off, and it was a two-hander. So it was so intellectually challenging for me, and it kept me so busy. It, I, it's only wet my appetite for more now. I just want to do more acting. I'm quite enjoying this sort of idea that I have this album, so I have my music 
love kind of taking care of and I love doing the straight acting at the same time. And, um, you know, obviously I'm, I will first and foremost always enjoy amalgamating the two in musical theatre, but having those two separate routes has been incredibly, like, creatively rewarding so far. As it's worked out for you, because you did the Palladium Panto, didn't you? I did. Well, when I was younger, they used to run till June. They were about six months. The no. Panto. Yes. So you were lucky because oh you, you might have had a problem if it had run till June. Goodness <laughs> me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I did the Panto. It wasn't this 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 Christmas gone. It was the one before. Ah. Uh, Yes, and it was yeah. the, it was the first one in, in yeah. forty years, and um, it was the big panto return. And I don't think any panto could ever top it for me personally, just because it was it was the cherry on top of a crazy year, and I was working alongside people that I adore and admire, and that I, I keep in touch with to this day. We thought it lasted ages, lasting till the end of January, but yes. June that's really rocked my boat. That I can't <laughs> get my head around that. There's a few from your panto that I love and I've interviewed. Julian Clary, who's fantastic, isn't he? He is absolutely wonderful. What I like about him, you walk in to see him and you barely recognise him because you're so used to seeing him on stage and how he dresses. And then you, you'd almost walk by him in the street. When I told him that, he said, that's what I want. You yeah, know, that's which his is aim, right. yeah. And Lee Mead, I like Lee Mead. He's, he's lovely. He's, lovely an, he's another normal person. Yeah, just somebody that is just a... He's got his own values, his own life outside of his work, and he loves his work, and he's great at it, and I've got a lot of time for him. And Paul Zerden, I've known for a long, long time. Did you go out with the puppet? Did you have a little spot with the puppet? Yeah, I had a spot with the puppet. Um, yeah, that that puppet, I never knew what that puppet was going to do. <laughs> um, and I used to try and just, you know, not I used to tread on eggshells around Paul because I knew that if I did anything to upset him, I'd get it in the neck <laughs> yes, with the puppet. Yes, you would, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> And, of course, very charismatic. When I go and talk to ladies' uh, theatre groups and mention Nigel Havers, they oh, all yeah. sort of swoon and whatever. What so, is it my mum calls him, the thinking woman's crumpet? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's wonderful. Like, I, I would I would love to do... Um, a play with Nigel to sit, like to see the real actor in him because he's what makes him so special is that he can laugh at himself. Yes, he can. I was just going to say that he, yeah. he doesn't take himself seriously. No. He'll have a go at anything, and whatever he does is good at. Really, yeah, absolutely. Doc Martin, I love that series. That was my first bit of proper telly. That, yeah, and it was my first scene was in a tiny, tiny room in a small house in Port Isaac with a five-month-old crying baby, six-foot Martin Clunes, and then eight <laughs> camera crew. And it was the most surreal experience I think I've ever had. And I had to talk with one of those West Country accents, so it was a lot like that. <laughs> and um, I was playing a teen mother, um, and I got this amazing baby called Todd, who was an extra baby. He was really chilled out. And, and yeah, it was... Um, it was amazing, and Martin Clunes is the nicest man. Yes, he is. And that street where the sort of surgery, very narrow, isn't it? Yeah, it's tiny. It's so hilly as well. And I, I think I stayed in the Slipway Hotel, which was the, the only hotel in Port Isaac. I was there for about two weeks, and you had to walk about 40 minutes to the top of the hill to get any signal on your mobile phone, Right. which for a, a, a girl who was 19 at the time is, <laughs> is utterly traumatic. And there were only two channels on the, on the, on the telly. So it was, yeah, it was a real experience, but I loved it. Loved it. I do it. I do it every day of the week. If I could. And you've done doctors as well, haven't you? I have. There's a medical yeah. theme going on. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did doctors as well. That's a rite of passage, I think, for every actor. Looking ahead, are you hoping to do more sort of TV as well as live theatre? Yes, I'd love to. I I feel like I um. I really like cut my chops on on acting, doing doing Funny Girl, and then going into doing the play, uh, doing Trist. And I've sort of figured out that I am I am a performer outside my voice, which is wonderful because it makes my voice better and it also makes my acting better. I think you've been very clever on this album because you you could have used three or four songs from Funny Girl, but you've only used the one song, haven't you? Which yeah. I think is a nice idea for you because people can listen to you singing different sorts of songs, really. Yes, and I mean, the, the choice to put people on the end of the album, I would like to say that it's confessional. It's me singing the song the way I want to sing it, and it's almost a separate entity from the musical, but it's an ode to what brought me to the point of making an album. I love that song. It was one of my grandparents' favourite songs, and, well, they always said I'd be a big star one day, etc. and I don't consider myself a big star, but I certainly consider myself lucky to work in the West End. And um, they were sadly not with us. My, my granddad passed away a week before I first went on for Funny Girl, so he never quite got to see it either, and it's a song for them as much as for the show. Um, it's personal. And there's one or two older songs that you somehow got hold of. Yes. Because, you know... Being quite old, I thought, 
I knew a lot of songs, but there's some on there which were written a few years ago that I didn't click on to, but I love mm. them when yeah. I listen to them, yeah. There's a, there's a Northern Soul element to it, and um, what I, I love the history of Northern Soul. I love the link into British heritage that it has. I love the idea that there is, um, there's two or three songs on there that were only made you know, famous in this country because a, a couple of DJs from the Wigan area went over to San Francisco and LA and trawled through record stores and picked up vinyls that had never quite made it to mainstream Motown radio play. And they brought them back and um, they had huge, huge halls of people dancing up and down the country. And, and that is like, Northern Soul is amazing. And it's no way me saying, I can do Northern Soul. It's me paying homage to that because I think it's wonderful. And I love that Motown sound. And I love the big brass of my, my first track, You Don't Mean It. And, yeah. Great intro, that. Yeah, it's a lovely, yeah, it's a yeah. lovely track. And people can go to your website and they can actually listen to little bits, can't they, if they yes. wish? Which yes. Which is a great idea, I think, because yeah. it's... So... It's, it's been fantastic so far. What's your big dream? When you walk out of here in a few minutes or an hour or so's time, have you got one really big dream you'd like to do for the future, really? Um, to, to, keep, to keep climbing this ladder that I'm on, to keep going, and um, to keep doing it with integrity and as a real human being and not, you know, giving... I want to continue making an example that people can do something if they are normal. You don't have to conform to an image. You can be who you are and you can still do well in your chosen profession. And I know that sounds cliche, but that is genuinely what I feel best about is that I've reached a certain level of success so far that I'm really proud of and I've done it with integrity. Any young people listening to this, obviously you're a great advert because you didn't go to a, a, a posh drama school, did you? You just queued up like Laura Michelle Kelly. No, and my dad wasn't a producer and I didn't have any links to the... I'm the only theatrical one in my family, really. I mean, we're all theatrical in a way, but I'm the only one that ever wanted to do it professionally. Um, so, yeah, I, it's, it is. It's, um, I've done it because I love it. Um, and there's nothing that's helped me other than my love for it and my family, obviously. About the Bournemouth School, I reckon they sort of must say, well, look, she started with us and she ended up in the West End. It's a great advert for people that join them, isn't yes, it? Yes, really? absolutely. And there's lots there's lots of people that go on to work professionally that go to Big Little. And um, I, I went back and sang with them actually only a few months ago. I sang at their anniversary concert and I will always go back because I love meeting people kids that want to go into it and I love giving advice because it's I'm finally in a position to give advice and feel like it's I've earned that position. <laughs> Natasha thanks for your time it's much appreciated. Thank you so much. I know it's a busy day for you and I wish your career continued success. Thank you. Keep looking on the Isle of Wight radio website the John Hannam website and YouTube for more John Hannam meets new interviews. Bye bye for now. Isle of Wight radio.